This, this chapter in my book, um, friendship, the, the friendship chapter, blew me away. Because when you think about all the roles you live in your life, so you might be a parent, you might have work, you're a sibling, you've got you know, a relationship with your parents, but the one friend, the role, the only you know, relationship you have that's out of choice is friends. And yet it's the one that often I think we drop as adults because it isn't one out of obligation or duty. And I mean that in a positive way to the other roles. Yeah. Mm. Because you go like, I'm too tired tonight, I won't actually go out. Um, and, and Professor Dunbar, he's kind of like the kind of world expert in friendship in Oxford. He talks about the golden number of friends. And how many do you think it would be? I have yeah, I'd say less than five. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. honestly, three to five is great. Honestly, yeah. three is great. And, and I thought to myself today when thinking about this and she was like, maybe that's where people, it, it's about figuring out what works for you. There's no one catch-all for everybody. No. And I think maybe COVID has really sharpened that for everybody. Mm. Like, how do you like to socialise? Do you want to go out for dinner? Do you want to go to the pub? Do you want to go for a hike? Like, actually, maybe ask yourself, what are my social preferences? You know, do I like one-to-one -one catching up or do I like to be in a group? You know, are you kind of more introverted that that one-to-one -one chat's nicer? Or, or you can be a social extrovert. Where you actually, you know, when you know the people, you're more comfortable. So sitting back and asking yourself the question, you know, how do I actually like to spend time that is so, like, the resources we have, the, the least, it's, never mind the petrol and <laughs> the rising cost of everything. We have very little time and energy as adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So friendship demands that of us. So it's about recognising that, yes, you've got to put the work into it. Maybe the balance won't actually come, but it might bring some balance. So say you actually decide to go, yeah. you don't want to go. Like I, I often think you make plans and then you're like, why did I make those plans? All the yeah. time. Yeah. You know, All you're like the at the time, you're like, yeah, yeah I'm going out. And then the time the comes and you're like, I'm tired, I have to have a shower. Yeah. But, but you'd be better. Does how go. much we value friendship change as we get older? I'm not sure. It depends. Mm. I think what's interesting is as social beings, maybe we don't understand the value in the connection that happens right, yeah, yeah. in friendship um, in the sense of our absolute need to feel like it's, it's so lovely when you have a chat with someone that you know you get on well, that they like you, that they get you mm -hmm. and that you share the same sense of humour. There's so much value in that. And I think maybe the value is diminishing in terms of feeling the demands of all the other roles that we're within. But in terms of, say, making friendships, I think one thing we kind of forget about is maybe looking to the past, because I think the past impacts how we actually um, engage people, kind of even to the school gate, to at work, in all these different situations. So it's really interesting. They, you, I always think of, like, the Breakfast Club. And, you know, in the Breakfast Club, so yeah. one professor yeah. came back and they said, look, if we divide people into four categories, and it's like the dejected, the rejected, the populars, <laughs> and the accepted, and it's like they lived in different planets. Mm. So people who you might think who make friends easily... There's actually truth in that. And they make friends easily because maybe if they haven't experienced rejection, okay. they actually don't notice when someone, like there might be where someone goes, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> they don't, the popular person doesn't actually see that. Whereas the person who's experienced rejection before and actually how you were at 16 is really important. So if you go back to how was I at 16? How did I get on in school? That, that kind of haunts your legacy of mm. friendship. And it's really important to go back and go, is there stuff I can actually work on here? Whereas the person who maybe was bullied or rejected or left out, um, they're going to notice every single cue. So they're hyper aware, not overly sensitive. They're aware of the rejection that actually they've experienced before. So I think in terms of making new friends, think about your nervous system and just calm it down. And just a very simple thing to do is to kind of go to breathe in and go, I am safe. I am calm. You say this in your head. You won't be making friends if you yeah, say just that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> you're doing it in your head. But if you calm your nervous system down, we enter into social engagement mode, and then people will connect with us easier. I wonder, mm. is it a gender thing, right? So I would look at women I would speak to in terms of trying to get a date for them to get together. Yes. Right? So it's like, we'll try and go for dinner. We'll try and go for a walk. And, I'll, <laughs> you know, you'll say, yeah, I can't do that Wednesday. I can do Wednesday week. Oh, well, I can't do that. And it's because their schedules are very heavy. Yeah. Whereas I know from male experiences that they'll go, Tuesday, yeah, I'll meet you. I'll go for that. I'll do whatever. Do, uh, do women put themselves further down the totem pole in terms of making that time for themselves, be it spending time in their friendships, 
is there a gender yeah, difference Yeah, I think to what you I say feel? to women is um, I admire when men recognise the importance yeah. of self-care. Mm. So rather than being kind of like, oh my God, he goes to his football every Tuesday at seven o'clock, you kind of go, okay, that's his time. Mm -hmm. And then look at your schedule. So say you're in, like it's a family situation. I think that it's that, it's that conscious choice to actually say we're going to meet. And, it, and that's what I'm saying about the balance part. It's actually not going to suit everybody. Of course. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it actually might put someone out a little bit that night, but you will be better filling up those needs because otherwise kind of resentment builds in and tiredness. So, yeah. so there's no easy fix. Like I'll put up kind of very practical tips on my Instagram page afterwards to kind of, because it's hard to get into. This is a really complex and yet Huge. straightforward. Yeah. Like it's really interesting. <clears throat> um, and when I was saying to you about like, you know, in terms of trying to make new friendships now, if you're a bit nervous, um, I think it's really important to kind of stand back and say, maybe the other person is as well and to give people a second chance. I was yeah. talking to a friend about this the other day and they said, that's one thing I would say to people is that, well, we all make mistakes, but give people a second chance. They mightn't have meant it yeah. like that. We all make social blunders. We all, I, you know, come away from and go, why did I say that? That was can so we, stupid. <laughs> can, we, can we get better at making new friends? Yes. You know, whatever, but re maybe, you know, reigniting old friendships or whatever. But what about making new friends? Can we, get, can we improve ourselves at that skill? Exactly. It's a yeah. skill. Like, yeah. It is a social skill. <clears throat> and I think, like when we think about September with kids and we'll be encouraging them to go and do a different yeah. activities, that's kind of a way in. I think sometimes if you're hoping to make new friendships, pick up something you enjoy anyway. So if it's the exercise class or if it's a painting, I don't care what it is, if it's rock climbing, but that you'll actually enjoy being there anyway. And you already are kind of around people who have similar interests to you. And that's why I thought like picking your social preferences is important. So for, for one person, their idea of heaven is going out for dinner. Someone else is like, I want to climb a mountain. Do yeah. you know? So I think it's just stepping Find back and asking. Plan. Yeah. Find your plan. I think I'll put up some questions on kind of really identifying, you know, what are your social preferences? And to give yourself a bit of a break, be really kind and take a risk because it is a risk. There is potential it's, for it rejection. It is daunting, I think. It is daunting. Like, I watch my kids on holidays and just... And your kids are probably the same. They just go, chat, do whatever. Totally. Whereas adults were just like... You know, I've seen it so many times of people moving to new areas, yeah. new country, and yeah. trying to make friends. Their kids have fully integrated it. Do you know why? And they find it so difficult. Because they haven't been burned at that stage. Yeah. So, so that my kids come back and they go, I made a friend, like, yeah. five seconds ago. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. This is my new best friend. Whereas yeah. we as adults, and as you say, you mentally yes. value so much from finding a person to have a cup of coffee with, have a chat with, if they're, especially so when important. they're on the same. My six-year-old notifies me now when he's made a new friend, and it's n n more or less it's on a daily basis. Yeah. He came in the other night and said, oh, by the way, I made a new friend. He's a seven. He's a seven oh, brilliant, right? Yeah, he's a seven. <laughs> it's on a friendship. A, I was like, a friendship uh, turns on. Is that a scale? Clear yeah, seven. It's a seven, yeah. But it's amazing how it's just done it, so yeah. quickly. And isn't it that lovely, like, someone comes in and says, I made a friend. Like, I know. Delighted. Yeah, yes. It's such a great feeling. I think it's really important for your physical and mental health. Yeah. And it's something I definitely encourage you to, even though we don't have the time or the energy. Yeah, but we'll find <laughs> it. Thank you, Alison. Thank, Thank you. you so